Greetings, this is Chaplain Bob Walker. Get out your King James Bible and turn to the Bible book of Zephaniah. That's Z-E-P-H-A-N-I-A-H, Zephaniah. I always got Zephaniah and Zechariah confused, and I still do. Um, this is Bob, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Zephaniah is one of the minor prophets, minor in size, not minor in importance. There's a lot of prophecy in the Old Testament, people, if you just read it. I mean, end time stuff. I mean, let's face it, the book of Genesis has got uh, end times material in it. Genesis 3.15. Uh, uh, Genesis 3 is the, uh, the fall of man with the promise of a coming redeemer who would crush the head of the serpent. So uh, there's probably more, I believe there's more prophecy in the Old Testament than there is in the New. I mean, the uh, book of Isaiah is probably the most quoted book in the New Testament. A lot of prophecy, people. But uh, sadly, most church people, I shudder to call them Christians, if you were to ask them to name 10 books in the Bible, they'd be hard-pressed. And if they could name 10 books, well, ask them to name 10 in the Old Testament, 10 in the New. If you can't even name 10 books, you most certainly have never read them. You know, it's just, I don't know, bad idea not to know the Word of God. Jesus gave an awful lot of warnings, as did Paul, as did the prophets. So let's go and read Zephaniah chapter 1 and verse 1. The word of the Lord which came unto Zephaniah, the son of Cushai, the son of Gedaliah, Gedaliah, the son of Amariah, the son of Hizkiah, 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 in the days of Josiah, the king of Ammon, king of Judah. Now, Josiah, the king of Judah, he was probably the last good king that Judah saw. There was a string of really bad kings. And they had led the people into witchcraft and idolatry and all the things that God hates. And then along comes Josiah. There's a a short period of revival, but the Lord was so angry that he's like, well, there's judgment coming, maybe not in Josiah's day, but when Josiah's gone, it's coming. And it did. And then uh, that's when Judah was taken into captivity by the Babylonians. So Josiah was a good king. And so Zephaniah was a contemporary with King Josiah. Okay, verse 2. I will utterly consume all things from off the land, saith the Lord. I will consume man and beast. I will consume the fowls of the heaven and the fishes of the sea and the stumbling blocks of, with, with the wicked. And I will cut off man from off the land, saith the Lord. I will also stretch out mine hand upon Judah and upon all the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And I will cut off the remnant of Baal from this place. And the name of the Chamorins, Chamorins with the priests. Now, Baal was just uh, a generic name for Lord or God. And it had been so associated with Satan worship that God said, don't call me by that name anymore. I mean, you, you can't take a name of God and then apply it to Satan and then think you're doing God a service by using that name. And I will cut off the remnant of Baal from this place in the name of the Chemarims with the priests, and them that worship the host of heaven upon the housetops. 
the host of heaven refers to the uh, the many, many, many angels. You want to worship an angel or you want to worship the creator of the angels? And them that worship the host of heaven upon the housetops and them that worship and that swear by the Lord and that swear by Malcolm. That's another satanic heathen God name. And them that are turned back from the Lord, and those that have not sought the Lord, nor inquired for him, hold thy peace at the presence of the Lord God. For the day of the Lord, that's the name of this series, for the day of the Lord is at hand. And, and that the, the day of the Lord is judgment upon the wicked people. I mean, let's face it, that's what we've been reading here. These people have been wicked. They've been worshiping Satan. And uh, if you want to worship Satan, hey, fine, no problem. Go ahead. But in the day of your calamity, ask Satan to deliver you. See how that works for you. And uh, I've always heard it said, try Jesus. If you don't like Jesus, well, don't worry, Satan will always take you back. I heard that, yeah. Hold thy peace at the presence of the Lord God, for the day of the Lord is at hand. For the Lord hath prepared a sacrifice, he hath bid his guests. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice that I will punish the princes and the king's children and all such as are clothed with strange apparel. I think we need to check something out here. All right, let's go to Matthew chapter 22, verse 1. I think, I believe this is what ties in with what we've just read. And Jesus, uh, verse 1, and uh, Matthew 22, verse 1, And Jesus answered and spake unto them again by parables and said, Now what's a parable? A parable is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. You know, the, the farmer planting crops and then the harvest, well, yeah. The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king which made a marriage for his son. Now, who's that certain king? God the Father. Who's the marriage? The bride of Christ, the church. And who's the son? Jesus the only begotten Son of, of God. So the kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king which made a marriage for his son and sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding, and they would not come. What? Guys, I'm having a, a wedding. Come, come on, you're invited. <clears throat> but they wouldn't come. Again he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidden, Behold, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fatling are killed, and all things are ready. Come to the marriage. Hey, dinner's on the table. Come on, dudes. It's it's the, the marriage. It's ready. Come on, let's go. But they made light of it. You know what it is to make light of it? You treat it like it's a joke. But they made light of it and went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise. And the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. Whoa. The king sends his servants out, invites these people to the a supper, a, a marriage of his lamb, uh, I mean, his marriage of his son with, with you know, a dinner and everything. And they treated him bad and killed him. Ooh. And the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. But, but when the king heard thereof, he was wroth. He was mad. He was angry. He was P.O.'d, people. That's the Bob translation. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth, and he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their city. Then saith he to his servants, The wedding is ready, 
but they which were bidden were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find, bid to the marriage. But those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all, as many as they found, both bad and good, and that's me, the bad, both bad and good, and the wedding was furnished with guests. And when the king came in to see the guest, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. What? Who's this guy over here? He doesn't belong. He's, uh, he doesn't have on a wedding garment. He doesn't have clothing for the proper clothing for the wedding. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. And he saith unto him, Friend, how camest thou in hither, not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. What are you going to tell God the Father? I mean, what can you? How can you answer God the Father when 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 you're not clothed with 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 a garment that's been washed white in the blood of the Lamb? When you don't have that, what are you going to what are you going to say to God the Father? You, you, you can't you can't answer him. Then said this king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot and take him away and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. Let's take a look at Revelation chapter 3 real quick, verse 1. And unto the angel of the church in Sardis write, These things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest and art dead. Be watchful, and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die, for I have not found thy works perfect before God. Remember, Therefore, how thou hast received and heard and hold fast and repent. Um, how can a believing church repent? This, uh, there's a lot of... I know I've beat this dead horse a few times, but there's people who tell you that we're supposed to repent. When, when the Bible says to repent, we're supposed to repent of our unbelief. But here... The Lord's talking to a church. Now, how's a church going to repent of their unbelief? And and it just now listen thing, listen carefully. In verse two, it says, "For I have not found thy works, thy works, thy works perfect before God." Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard and hold fast. And repent. Repent of what? Their unbelief? It just mention their works. What can I tell you? If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments. And they should shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. Raiment's just an old English word for clothes. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and his angels." Sounds to me like your name could be blotted out of the book of life. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. So, in Revelation 7 and verse 14, uh, John was asking a question to the angel, right? So, Well, let's take a look. 
In Revelation chapter 7, John's taking a look at some people. Verse 13, And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes? And whence came they? So they got white robes. And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said unto me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. See, if you're going to go to the marriage supper of the Lamb, you better have your white robes that are washed with the blood of the Lamb. All right, Zephaniah chapter 1, verse 8. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice that I will punish the princes and the king's children and all such as are clothed with strange apparel. Apparel, garment, raiment, they're all synonyms. They mean basically the same thing. In the same day also I will punish all those that leap on the threshold which fill their master's houses with violence and deceit. And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord, that there shall be a noise of a cry from the fish gate and a howling from the second and a great crashing from the hills. Howl, ye inhabitants of Maktesh, for all the merchant people are cut, off, cut down. All they that bear silver are cut off. And it shall come to pass at the time that I will search Jerusalem with candles and punish the men that are settled on their lees that say in their heart, The Lord will not do good, neither will he do evil. There's people that say that kind of stuff, you know. There's a thing going around where, uh, like the Unitarians, I don't know if it's exactly the Unitarians, but people like them. They say that, well, you know, God made the universe and he, he just kind of like wound it up like a, a winding, a wound alarm clock. Yeah, I'm old. We used to have those back, back in the day, wind up alarm clocks. So God wound up the universe and just let it go. And he's now he's off on vacation somewhere for, you know, and he's not paying attention to what's going on. No, 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 no. And it shall come to pass at that time that I will search Jerusalem with candles and punish the men that are settled on their lees, that say in their heart, The Lord will not do good, neither will he do evil. Therefore, their goods shall become a booty. A uh, booty is like a treasure. Uh, if you listen to the ghetto slang, booty refers to... Never mind. And their houses, uh, therefore their goods shall become a booty, and their houses a desolation. They shall also build houses, but not inhabit them. And they shall plant vineyards, but not drink the wine thereof. Why? Because the Babylonians are going to come and take all you people away. You're going to build a house, you're going to plant a vineyard, but you're not going to live in it, and you're not going to enjoy the grapes, because the Babylonians are coming. Verse 14. The great day of the Lord is near. It is near. And hasteneth greatly, even the voice of the day of the Lord. The mighty men shall cry there bitterly. That day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of wastedness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness, a day of the trumpet and alarm against the fenced cities. And against the high towers. Isn't that interesting? Because there are seven trumpets in the book of Revelation of plagues, the vials, the trumpets. So a day of the trumpet and alarm against the fenced cities and against the high towers. And I will bring distress upon men that they shall walk like blind men, because they have sinned against the Lord, and their blood shall be poured out as dust, and their flesh as the dung. Neither their silver 
nor their gold shall be able to deliver them in the day of the Lord's wrath. But the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy. And if you've been following this study, you know the world's going to be wiped out, burned to a crisp. But the whole land shall be devoured by the fire of his jealousy, for he shall even make for he shall make even a speedy riddance of all them that dwell in the land. You see, it was coming. The Babylonians were going to, God was going to send the Babylonians for this period of time. But there's also a ultimate fulfillment looking forward to the end times. And that's the thing about the Bible. The Bible could talk about the present, talk about the past, and then talk about the future. And that's where, if you don't have the Spirit of God, you, you can't understand this stuff. So, all right, well, I'll, I think, let's see. I think I'm going to close this out, and uh, we'll see what else we got. We got a couple more books for the uh, Old Testament, the Day of the Lord. I thought I was almost done. Oh, in my previous Bible study, I said the uh, Spirit of the Lord is is darkness. I think I'm what I meant to say was where the Spirit of the Lord is not is darkness. Uh, I think it was Christine that's pointed that out. Thank you, Christine. Um, so, yeah, I made a mistake. But, um, yeah, sometimes I stay up late doing these Bible studies, and uh, sometimes I'm not as alert or as rested as I would like to be, but uh, hey, I'm still working a full-time job, and uh, you know, I don't have a church. I don't have people that support me. I support myself. Uh, Jesus said, freely you have received, freely give, and that's what I do. You know, I'm just a volunteer. And uh, like I've said in the past, uh, when you got a volunteer that does something for free, just remember you, you, you get what you pay for in this world. So, all right, well, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world, and that's Jesus, who is the Christ, in his precious name, amen.